and I have a different dad to my siblings that mm. I grew up with, and they're all like white, so yeah. I couldn't understand. I was like, why am I different? I didn't understand why, um, like I couldn't keep eye contact with people, mm -hmm. so I didn't like to look at anyone, and I didn't like them to look at me. I was alone, like you know, I realized, oh, acting is lonely. Like you're, you get these jobs, you go to these new countries and new cities, and then you're on set with, with a bunch of people, and then you're also like, then you're just in a hotel room by yourself for so long. Was that lighting in a bottle that you like realized your life? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When I realized there were certain things that other people weren't saying or in this way, like even a song like Kiss the Boy, I wouldn't ever have written that before, especially when yeah. I was in the closet. Hi, this is Lauren Engel of Saddle Club. I'm here with Keenan Lonsdale. Hey. I saw Love Simon uh, cool. and I went with my boyfriend. I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna interview you. Like next to me, I was like, oh, this is so surreal. <laughs> so you're born in Sydney, right? Yeah, like an hour west of Sydney. Yeah. Yeah. And your dad's Nigerian and your mom's Australian. Yeah. Did they meet in Sydney or? Yeah, they met in Sydney. And then he, but he was still sort of like living in Nigeria. Oh, okay. Back and forth, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you ever have like mixed identity issues growing up? Because like I'm half American and half Chinese and I asked a lot of like, mixed race kind of things? Yeah, I was mostly just like confused. I couldn't understand because I didn't like grow up with my dad so and I have a different dad to my siblings that mm. I grew up with and they're all like white so yeah. I couldn't understand. I was like why am I different to all of you? Mm -hmm. And then like we would go out to like if we went outside people would always ask my mom like if I was adopted and oh. like it was I always felt like separated mm. from like my family and um by other people, which was really weird. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was like that strange thing. And then I met my other siblings from my dad's side and they're like full Nigerian. And and then I felt like white in comparison to them. Yeah, <laughs> so that's it was like, exactly how I feel. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a weird, <laughs> weird uh, kind of weird, interesting thing. And you like grew into your skin like over time, like learning more or? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, just, I mean, I'm still doing it. Actually, coming to coming to America was um, like a big part in it. I think like mm -hmm. there's like the African um, community is growing in Sydney, but it's it's nothing in comparison to like black culture that is in America still. So yeah. I didn't grow up with many other black kids um, that were like me, and so even like living over here and just learning more about the history here has been like very helpful for my growth and mm -hmm. I'm, there's still a lot to learn but yeah, yeah it's kind of I don't know it's just a, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's just a little step each time is a new like step and a new kind of learning, yeah. learning curve what was it like growing up with so many siblings like 11 total <laughs> yeah um it was it was kind of yeah it was interesting <laughs> um yeah it always made even you know like going back I went back home for my mom's 60th birthday and like we're all just so different and everyone's so unique and but that's the only way I know it to be you know mm -hmm. so I always find it interesting when like I have friends that don't have siblings or they just have one or two and like yeah I find that really fascinating and who put you on to Michael Jackson a long time ago I think it was <laughs> my mom like I think uh it wasn't on purpose like she mm -hmm. just happened to have the tv on and like one of his concerts was playing um, like a live show was like on on air and um, and I just like got hooked and usually she always says that when she would leave the room I would mm -hmm. just like burst out in tears like all the time <laughs> but she left the room and suddenly she came back and I was like still watching the TV and she was like oh my gosh like maybe I should just buy him all this Michael Jackson stuff mm -hmm. and then it'll keep him calm and happy and then she did and then like <laughs> and it was it, that's all I needed yeah. What other music was playing in the house when you were growing up? My brother was playing like, like corn, and like m like heavy metal. And oh, stuff. <laughs> like one of my brothers. Yeah. Um, my sister. One of my sisters was playing like a ton of R and B, um, which I, you know, nothing against any genre, but mm -hmm. I, I I gravitated more yeah. towards the R and B, um, and and also just like general pop and. Um, yeah, I, I think mostly R&B. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Did you fun. learn an instrument or? No, um, 
I like, I'm trying to learn the ukulele now. <laughs> I, I want to be able to play a bunch of instruments, but I'm like, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. But no, I just was focused on like dancing and um, for majority of the time. And then eventually it sort of grew into acting and music. Yeah. What age did you start dancing actually? I, start, I did like my first like dance solo competition at four or five. Oh wow. Yeah. Were you competitive? <laughs> yeah. I was super competitive. I was super shy, but I wanted I really wanted to be on stage and I wanted to like like collect as many trophies as possible and like I yeah, I just loved being on stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you describe yourself back then growing up? Quiet, scared, um, obsessive, uh, like a dreamer. I've, I felt like very misunderstood um, by everyone except for my mom, so it's oh. like latched on. Yeah. Like, but I had a, like a lot of love. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And you, did you have like social anxiety since a young age? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't understand why, um, like I couldn't keep eye contact with people. Mm -hmm. So I didn't like to look at anyone and I didn't like them to look at me. It's like, I just couldn't understand. And also because I was like this black kid with this white family, in Australia, like everyone was just looking at me all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I was dancing, I'd be like often the only boy. And so then more people would look at me and I couldn't understand it. So then I would just like, I would walk around like this until I saw my mom and then I would grab my mom. <laughs> and go, okay. um, but yeah, I couldn't keep any eye contact. My yeah. like teachers thought that I was mute. Oh. Yeah, and that I had like learning disabilities and stuff. Did you like school back then? I actually loved school. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I loved learning, like, I, and I couldn't, the one thing I couldn't understand was why, I was very, like, by the rules mm -hmm. when I was a kid, so I didn't understand why, like, other kids wanted to break the rules or, like, why they wouldn't listen to the teacher. Like, I couldn't process that. Um, I don't like rules now, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was very, like, like, I wouldn't cross the street unless, like, the, the light was perfectly green and, like, mm -hmm. good to go, like. Not until I was like 16. <laughs> 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 <So> honestly. <laughs> Were your favorite subjects like creative subjects then at school? Um, yeah, I liked English, like uh, creative writing. Mm -hmm. um, I liked spelling. I, I liked everything, maybe except for geography. Um, I was really bad at that. Yeah. I still am. <laughs> um, and then I liked maths, but I wasn't that good at it. But I, I just kind of liked it mm -hmm. and I also liked business like in high school but I also wasn't very good at that. <laughs> so I like a lot of things that I'm not good at <laughs> what did your parents do um, my mom like worked three jobs so I didn't grow up with my dad I think he, um, he did like a lot of security work mm -hmm. but my mom like did everything she was like raising six of us by herself so she like three jobs at once she was working at this like tv store then for a long time she was working at the gas station like from like 11 at night to like 8 in the morning and then working at an office at the same time like she was just doing everything she could wow to, yeah that's so impressive but, yeah I don't, I don't know how she did it and stayed sane but mm -hmm. she uh she did it she doesn't have to work anymore so mm -hmm. it's good did she push all of like your siblings and you creatively or was it just kind of you no um the eldest two, like if I'm just talking about my siblings from mm -hmm. my mom's side, they did dancing when they were younger. So my mom had a, like a rough idea of that sort of world. Mm -hmm. So when I wanted to join it, she kind of knew where to go. But the others were really heavily into sports and, um, and yeah, but we're also very creative in our own ways. Like, so mom really just wanted us to do whatever it was that we were super passionate about. Um, so I think which made it even harder for her too because we all did different things. Yeah. <laughs> my brother played football and played soccer and then was a DJ and then like some dancing and then my sister was playing basketball and I'm like heavily dancing. Like it was really, yeah, mm -hmm. it was full on. What made you decide to um, put out YouTube videos when you were like 20? Um, like the covers. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I, I wanted to find my voice like I tried to do singing lessons, like private singing lessons in school, but um, we, couldn't, we couldn't afford them. So I did a couple and then I had to stop. Um, so I would just record myself at home. And then by the time I started, like when I got my first job at 18, and I think I was getting like, 
getting a thousand dollars a week. I was like, oh my god! Like, oh. And so like I quickly, the first paycheck I got, I like ran to the music store and I bought a microphone, um, which cost like eight hundred dollars. So then I had nothing, <laughs> but I still have that same microphone. Um, and that was eight years ago. And then I decided like from there, once I had the equipment, I wanted to really like just practice recording and see if I could make my own stuff because I didn't really know any producers. So, mm -hmm. and I thought that doing YouTube covers would be a good way to, to learn about my voice and also gauge a reaction from people that didn't know me or whether they liked it or not. Mm -hmm. Cause I wasn't a confident singer. So it actually really helped with my confidence. Oh, yeah. were you also like writing your own songs? I was at the time, yeah. yeah. I was like balancing like writing original stuff and doing covers. Um, and the, I listen to those songs every now and then, <laughs> me and my friends, just to have a good laugh. <laughs> just to have, oh my god. Yeah. They, my friends like played some awful, awful songs at my 21st as well, just to embarrass me in front of everyone. And it was, it was good. <laughs> yeah. And then was it also that year that you were like dropped by your like LA and like Sydney? Was it managers? Yeah, that was that was the first time I came here for pilot season, so mm -hmm. I was 21. Um, yeah, right after I turned 21, I came here and did like, I got an American team, it was like sweet, but something felt a bit off. Mm -hmm. And then um, a few weeks in, like I had had a, just a sort of falling out with my Australian manager at the time. Mm -hmm. I said to him like, I don't really feel like you believe in me. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, I don't. You think you could do all these things. You think you've oh got all this potential, gosh. but Ridiculous. you're a brat and you can't do this and you can't do that. And I was like, okay. And then, and then like the next day I got an email from my American team yeah. um, who is connected to him and they said, we're, we're going to let you go. And I was like, oh. Damn. So it was, I was yeah. only with them for a month. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was just out here like stuck and I was like, yeah. well, what the hell am I supposed to do? Like I came all the way here and like, all my friends were going for all these auditions and I was just like at the house like doing nothing so then I I worked on music again mm -hmm. um, and then I decided I was like I don't want a team like I don't if I don't have to have a team right now like I didn't trust people and mm -hmm. I'd been hurt so many times from managers um, acting and music um, even after that but like I was just like I'm just gonna do it by myself and then eventually uh, I found, or the right people sort of found me and they really believed in me and they were just good people. And, and then were you also like a VJ for MTV? Yeah. You interviewed like Disclosure? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was just telling my friends about that yesterday. <laughs> I interviewed Disclosure and like um, Azalea Banks once and like Jesse J. And, wow. Um, Rufus DeSouls. Like yeah. In Australia, yeah. We were now like super tight, which is so funny. <laughs> but yeah, I was 19 when I got that job. Huge. And still super socially anxious, and so I remember saying to my managers, I was like, why did they pick me? Like, I don't know how to talk, like, I don't drink, I don't party, like, how am I supposed to host the party? <laughs> this is ridiculous. Um, and I was like thrown in the deep end, and then it was, I did it for two years, and it was really fun. Like, I knew in deep inside, like, I'm not a VJ, like, I'm not very good at this. <laughs> But I can get by, but I knew I wasn't very good at it. Um, but it was like really cool for my growth and also just MTV, like they're, they're such a great company and they were so nice to me and they supported me when I said that I wanted to pursue acting and music. Oh, okay. And, like they weren't weird at all with that. They like let me go off and mm -hmm. yeah, it's cool. And your character Wally, you're kind of similar in some ways, like growing and like learning about yourself. Mm, yeah. yeah, I mean everyone is, right? Like we're all... I think we all start these kids and we've got all, all of these dreams and then you're, you're open-minded but you're also afraid because it's like a huge world and then you grow up and like you get all these colors, different kind of colors painted on you or just like one color mm -hmm. and then you sort of have to like start breaking that apart and adding new colors or stripping it back or whatever. So I feel like, I feel like we all do that maybe at different points in our lives but yeah, I think Wally and me did it at a similar time. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of funny. And it was always a goal for you kind of to move to LA. Yeah. Yeah, since I, I was pretty obsessed with it when I was uh, younger, which is why it was disappointing when I finally mm. got here and then, like, um, it was, uh, it didn't feel very good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but then once I had the right people around me and, like, 
good friends and I learnt that the places it's important not to just like put all of my focus on um, like making it if that mm-hmm. makes sense because you can really hustle here of course but at the same time like it's a beautiful place and you can have a really good time without just trying to like um, be super successful straight away mm-hmm. so once I let that go a bit I ended up like really falling in love with the place yeah yeah and then did you have any like mentors or people to guide you along the way? Yeah, a ton. Yeah, whether it was like agents, managers, or um, even now, like I've, I've got certain people that, it, and friends, like, but I feel like people come in and out of your life at the right time. Even people that haven't, it hasn't felt like at the time, like they guided me. Maybe mm-hmm. that wasn't their intention. In the end, it like taught me a lot. Without all of those ups and downs and those like confusing points and new lessons, like I wouldn't have come to the space I'm at now. Mm-hmm. So, How are you good. able to sustain yourself financially when you first moved here? Um, so I was a dance teacher. So while I was doing MTV, um, I was also teaching uh, dance classes mm. like six days a week. Oh wow. Yeah. And you can actually make pretty good money as a dance yeah. teacher. Like more so than if you worked like a, a regular job at that age. So I just like taught and taught and taught. And then that's how I had enough money to come over for like three months, like mm-hmm. at a time. Um, and then I remember, I think 2014, I went back, taught again, was like trying to get my visa and then the audition for Insurgent yeah. um, came up. And, Huge. And then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you're here. And then also when you moved here, you kind of thought that all your problems would go away after you become successful. Yeah. But it just got more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I definitely thought that. It was like, that That was like such a heartbreaking, weird thing. It was mm-hmm. like once I, I, I was in Atlanta and I was shooting Insurgent. It was like way more than I expected. I thought I was just going to like come over here and get like a little guest role on a show. Mm-hmm. Um, so for the first thing to be a movie franchise and they were like, you're going to do this one and you're signed on for others. And I was like, whoa. Like, and then it was like the best thing ever, right? But then at the same time, I was alone. Like, you know, I realized, oh, acting is lonely. Like you're, you get these jobs, you go to these new countries and new cities, and then you're on set with with a bunch of people. And then you're also like, then you're just in a hotel room by yourself for so long. And because I was super shy, like I didn't know how to reach out to anyone, like make many friends. And then I also realized like you sort of, after the high leaves, you sort of like come back to a reality where it's like the new normal. So suddenly it wasn't like this crazy thing that I booked this movie, suddenly like that was the job and like Mm -hmm. here you are. And so I realized at that point, like maybe there's other things I need to figure out than just my career, but it took took a while. Yeah, and also you were like putting all your time devoted to it and you had very little time for your personal life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, like, I had I'd come out, like, six months before that, like, to my friends. Mm-hmm. So that was a really good thing. Like, I was at least in a slightly better space than I had been in previous years. So oh, the, the timing how old was, were you? Um, 22. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then I went, I guess, like, I went back in the closet when I came over to America. Mm-hmm. But still, yeah. at least, like, I had a lot of weight off my shoulders. Um, and, yeah, it was just an interesting time. It's weird. Was that lighting in a bottle that you like realized your life? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I I really like music festivals. Um, I've only been going to them for like a year. I was super against them when I was younger. I didn't Mm -hmm. understand. I didn't, I was against like partying when I was younger and like the idea of fun or not like focusing, focusing. Like I couldn't understand why. Like, anyone would not want to focus on their career and, like, you know. Um, but I didn't realize that you learn, like, honoring yourself by, like, having fun, by going on adventures, by, like, seeing the world and meeting new people and, like, experiencing more. Like, it, it builds you as a person. It builds you as a, as a creative person as well. I guess I fell in and out of love with my dreams at once, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, the reasons why I thought I loved it was like stripped away. 
mm -hmm. the reasons why I thought like everything was sort of stripped away and then um, new reasons like sort of came back. At first you thought that like coming out was like really difficult because you heard all these horror stories. Has any of them been true or has it been mostly like really positive? It was more, I was more fearful beforehand and like what I was hearing um, was that there would be more restrictions that would be a risk and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But then once I, once I actually did it, it was more just a celebration and support. Oh, yeah. Um, and also I had, you know, like I had other people like I saw other actors coming out as well, and I was mm -hmm. like, it's not a problem, it's not an issue. Mm -hmm. Unless you believe it's an issue. Yeah. It's like anything. What was the idea for your music video, Good Life? That, <laughs> so the Good Life music video was actually inspired by the music festival, um, by Lightning. Mm -hmm. um, because I felt like what you experience at music festivals, it's like this sort of little, this bubble of this like world that could be. Um, and so I wanted to translate that into the music video of the way that I feel like the world could be one day if we were all, like all my friends and I, and they've helped me so much along the way, like we love each other so much, we're, there's no judgment, we're all supporting each other in the different things that we want to do, um, and we all work hard but at the same time we all just are really happy that we're alive, mm -hmm. I guess. And so. Yeah. Sometimes there's nothing left to do but to celebrate. Mm -hmm. And so that's what good life was. Um, and it's not to say that there aren't, that everything's like 100% amazing all the time, but you have to celebrate those moments of joy and the good things that you do have um, in order to get through it. Um, and sometimes we don't even recognize that. So yeah, I, I, wanted, I wanted that to be in good life. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like we achieved it, like, that's how we, that's how it, that energy with my friends and I, like, it's how it really feels, and then having um, a bunch of, uh, like, awesome fans kind of join in at the end was really special too, just because they've been so supportive, and yeah, it was fun. <laughs> Kiss the Boy is so good, I keep oh. listening to it on repeat. <laughs> yeah, thank you. What were the inspirations behind that? It was a lot, it was like the whole journey. Um, full circle, I guess. Um, it started because I think like Love Simon had released like some videos or mm -hmm. like teasers, um, and then I don't know if it automatically came up or if I just thought of it. But Kiss the Girl from Little Mermaid like like either popped up on YouTube or mm -hmm. in my brain, and then I was like, ah, oh, it's so like special, like so romantic and beautiful, like that kind of Disney kind mm -hmm. of feeling, and I was like. I wish there was one with a boy, because that would, I wonder what that feels like. Mm -hmm. um, so then I was going to make a cover of it and like uh, remake it, but I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> it, it just wasn't working. Yeah. And then, um, and then from there, like an hour later, I had started just developing some melodies for um, what became Kiss the Boy, mm -hmm. like as an original song. And um, it was cool. Like I had so much to draw from like whether it was the story, sort of, you know, inspiration from the movie, my own story, like my relationships in the past or the fear and then, but also it's like what I was talking about how it's, the song is, the song is like celebratory and it's positive, but the whole thing isn't, um, it doesn't shy away from the fact that there was suffering involved to get through to that, the light. Mm -hmm. like yeah. Um, yeah. What was the actual change in focus that you wanted to focus more and more in music, like this and last year? Um, I mean, I guess I've always tried to, I've always like put a lot of focus into it. It's just that I didn't have a clear enough direction on what I was trying to say and why I was trying to say it, um, which is okay. Like I needed to figure it out, but once I fully like figured myself out, if that's even possible, um, <laughs> I felt like, I don't know, the music just started coming, like the ideas started flowing. There was nothing like holding me back from what I could say or what I could share. Mm -hmm. So then once I, now that I'm in that space and I'm creating from that space, like it's just stuff that I, I don't know, now I feel like when I'm making music, it's not, it's not because I'm just trying to fulfill 
like my obsession <clears throat> or get myself to like be the best music artist in the world or you know which is the way I used to think about it now it's more just like these are things that I've learned I it's really it's fun like it makes me feel good making music and I like the idea of sharing it with other people especially if it has a message it doesn't have to have a message but if it can be fun and it has a message and it feels great and we can sort of, I don't know, connect through that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just, I feel like we're driven towards that at the moment. Mm -hmm. Do you have a team of like producers now helping you and everything? Um, yeah, I have a couple of producers that, yeah, I've worked with a lot of producers over time and then um, one in particular that I work a lot with is Louis Fouton. Yeah, you did a show with him at the Roxy, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, which is awesome and it's good to, it's good to just like bounce off of different energies like creatively and, mm -hmm. and see what happens and he's so talented and yeah, it's, yeah. it's good. You have an album coming soon? I don't know if it's soon, I hope it's, <laughs> I hope it's soon. Like, um, I have a, the more I, I guess, like the more I discover about myself or other people, the more the album changes. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few like key songs on there that I that I know will definitely be on there. Maybe like four or five mm -hmm. um, that are already written, but I feel like the rest isn't written yet. Um, and I have like hundreds of songs, but I I'll know when it's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How do you say your music has changed since the early songs you made? I'm not copying other people mm. anymore. I w yeah. I used to like. Well, I didn't really think that I could create much original stuff. I didn't view myself as that. I thought I wanted to just like fit into a very specific like look and a very specific market um, and target a specific audience. And because I didn't think I could be anything more than that, um, just because I was still young and growing up. And um, but the more that yeah, the more that I became in touch with the things that made me unique or not unique, but um, when I realized there were certain things that other people weren't saying or in this way, like even a song like Kiss the Boy, I would not never have written that <laughs> before, especially when yeah. I was in the closet. Because like, <laughs> I didn't believe that, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't have that like courage, I suppose. What would you say have been your biggest challenges so far? In music? Or personal life, up to you. Uh, or acting. Yeah, um, sexuality was the biggest challenge, like, um, but that was all involved with like just loving myself in general. I think it was once I realized that it was beyond sexuality, that's when I was really able to love myself. Because mm -hmm. I thought the whole, th the whole time, I thought like that's the major thing, that's my major problem. But I realized it was just like loving the human that I am exactly as I am, whether I'm at a low or a high, or whether I do something good or something that's not that good, like still honoring Mm -hmm. me so that was probably the hardest and then a challenge like outside of myself is more like more so if I can see I think most people in business or which is like the world that we live in operate in a closed with a closed mind um, or not necessarily a closed mind but we all, you know, really stick to the rules and we like control and structure. And I think the challenge I always face, or not always face, not with my team, but um, is just trying to explain to people like, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to go this way. It doesn't have to be at a certain standard. It doesn't even have to be good. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. we can just make it just to see what happens because we can, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. What does love mean to you? Uh, love means to me magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What does love mean to you? I guess having someone, or just like being understood by anyone, mm. like friends, family, mm. relationships. And then I feel like if you're understood, you could actually be yourself, but it takes a long, yeah. long time to actually feel like someone understands you. Yeah, that feeling of being on, yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. That's such a, I 100% relate to that. I think. Being able to be with your friends or a partner or family and being like, I see you 
like, and you see me. Mm-hmm. Like, exactly for who you are. You could do this, you could do that, you could say this, you could say that, but I know who you are, and, like, and I love that person. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's love, like, unconditional. Mm-hmm. What does success look like to you? Love. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. Before, it used to be be the best entertainer, be significant in the world, make changes. And now, success is... If, if you feel whole and successful and you, and, you, and you feel love for yourself and for others and you can be proud of yourself whether it's like you changed one person's life or a million person's life, lives or even if you're proud of yourself because you're like I woke up today and I put on music and I danced around the house mm-hmm. then you were successful that day yeah. if you feel good like then you did it yeah I love that last question what do you want to be remembered for? such a hard question <laughs> <laughs> just being me just mm-hmm. remembered for being honest as in my life and living that life I don't know yeah, yeah I, don't I know. love that thank you so much yeah, thank <laughs> this you. is great yeah. bye guys <laughs>